So the summer holiday prep, the main thing is relax, have fun, do things with your friends because you deserve it and you really, really need it. Hi and welcome to Miss Estric Biology. Now in this video I'm actually going to be going through the top tips to manage the GCSE to A level transition and I'm going to split this into what you could do to prepare over the summer, what A level mindset you need and probably most importantly the study skills. Now I'm going to put time codes along here at the bottom so you can jump to whatever is going to be the most important bit for you. So let's get right into it. Okay so let's talk about that long summer holiday. You have had an incredibly disturbed two years if you're watching this in 2021 with the pandemic and if you're not watching it in 2021 then you have still had a really really busy two years doing all of your GCSEs. So the summer holiday prep the main thing is relax, have fun, do things with your friends because you deserve it and you really really need it. It's so important to make sure that you do refresh, relax and then you can just rejuvenate yourself ready to start your A-levels. This is your reward for doing all of that hard work through your GCSEs. So make sure you do something fun, see your friends, whatever it is that you like to do to make sure that you can relax. Make sure you're then in a really good, healthy, fit state, full of energy when you start in September. Now, some students do actually get bored in the summer holidays. So if you do want to do something else over the summer, then this is a great summer to do it. You might be able to do things like NCS. And develop a whole range of skills so NCS is a fantastic program you could see if you can find some work experience for whatever you might be thinking of doing at university or if you don't know what you want to do then this is a great opportunity to try out some different options to get an idea of what you may or may not like get a paid job that will build up a range of skills whilst also the benefit of course of getting some money so basically any of those activities would be great for first of all keeping you entertained if you are bored but more importantly it gives you a more rounded personal statement when you get to university applications or for job applications because people are going to employ you or offer you a place at university they want to know more than just what grades are you capable of getting they want to know what you are like as a whole as a person and what you could bring to the job or the university so what other skills do you have are you showing anything to do with leadership um, have you worked with a range of different people have you got good communication skills um, and so on and so on so these are great opportunities for you to be able to demonstrate those so that would be a fantastic opportunity for you to be able to build up your whole personal statement profile or CV. The final thing to say about the summer holidays is I do recommend that the last two weeks of the summer you do start to consider how you can prepare for your A-levels and most schools or sixth forms colleges they would have probably have given you some summer holiday homework for your A-levels or at least some summer reading. So that would be your chance to then get on with the homework you've been given or it might be some extra reading or reading of certain text materials that are linked to your course. That would be the time to do it. Now, if you haven't been set summer holiday homework, I do think it's still really important to use those two weeks to look over what are the key concepts from GCSE that you have learned that link to your course. And the reason for that is you've probably had off at least two months of school. So essentially you've had two months to forget everything you've ever learned. And then you're going to start your A-levels, which are going to be the hardest course that you've ever had to do. So do yourself a favour by just looking over, for example, in biology, some of the key terms that link to cells, because that will be the first topic you start on. So read over the organelles and cells, make sure you can remember them all. And then when you do start in the lessons, it won't feel quite so daunting. Now, in terms of resources you might want to buy, uh, most schools or sixth form colleges will ask that you have a folder now instead of an exercise book. So maybe get some ring bound folders. Um, most schools will ask you to provide your own lined paper. So you might want to get a cheap notepad, um, some pens, pencils, whatever stationery you like, just so you can feel really nice and prepared, fresh start and all of that fresh stationery. And if you're like me, I love stationery. So this is your chance to splurge. Now, I do recommend for the sciences, the CGP Head Start to books, and I'll link those down in the description so you can find those. Um, they're really cheap, very, very small, basically like revision guides. And what they do is they show you what are the key concepts in GCSE that are going to come up in A-level. 
So you can start to see this transition of what you learned at GCSE and then how that will increase and challenge in detail at A level. And by looking through those um, just at the end of the summer or as you start the new topics, it will give you an idea and it will really help you with those key terms. I wouldn't recommend buying the textbook because most schools um, or sixth form colleges will provide you with either a textbook electronically or a hard copy. And if they don't, then you can buy one afterwards. OK, so the A-level mindset. Now, what I mean by this is there's a complete shift in how you need to think and approach A-levels compared to GCSE. And the first thing I want to say is I often get asked, is A-level biology hard? And the answer is yes, it is hard, as are all A-levels, because the A in A-level stands for advanced. It is an advanced level qualification, so it has to be hard. Now, that doesn't mean it's impossible. It just means it's a challenge, but it's a challenge that I'm sure you will be able to do. So when you do start your A-levels, just be mentally prepared for that. You will find it hard. Even if you were getting eights and nines really easily at GCSE, you will find it hard because it is a lot more content. It's a lot more detailed and there's more skills involved, a lot more application and math skills. And you have to put aside the time to actually consolidate that learning. So it is hard, but don't let that put you off. I'm going to be going through in the last bit of this video things that you can do to make sure that even though it's hard, you can still succeed. Now, as well as finding it hard being completely normal, it's also really normal that you will get lower grades than you've ever had at the start of the course. So you might be used to getting, as I said, maybe grades six, sevens, eights and nines at GCSEs. Expect to be getting at least two to three grades lower. And that's something that I do see in almost all my students that I've taught for the last 10 years. And it is a really negative shock because you may have tried really, really hard and then you've been given a grade C or a B. When if you did that level of work at GCSE, you might have got an eight or a nine. And this is completely normal and it is expected. So don't get downhearted when that happens. And I do say when because it will happen at some point to everyone. All that is showing you is you haven't developed the skills yet that you need to get the A's and A stars for A level. And of course you haven't because you are just starting the A level. You're not doing the exam for another two years. So you won't be getting those grades at first. And that is fine. The key thing is that where you're losing the marks, you are reflecting on that. And I've got a video that you can watch um, based on how you can actually reflect on your tests to improve but reflect on it and then use that information to look at what you personally need to do to improve your grade. And that's what you need to be looking at. Are you making improvements? And it might be very small improvements over quite a long period of time, but as long as you're improving, that is the key thing. So it is hard, but don't let that put you off. I'm going to be going through in the last bit of this video things that you can do to make sure that even though it's hard, you can still succeed. The next thing about the A-level mindset is independent learning. And this is going to be a phrase that you will hear so many times from your teachers that you'll get sick of it. And I'm completely guilty of that. Independent learning is something that I'll be saying over and over and over. And what we mean by that is, in comparison to GCSE, where you'd be told this is exactly what you need to do for homework, you would probably do that homework, bring it to the lesson, done. At A level, you will be given homework to do just like that. But in addition to that, you will be expected to be doing extra. And that could be reading over your notes. It could be turning those notes into flashcards or mind maps or other acts of recall. And I've got a video on that, which I'll link up the top so you can have a look at. Basically, you need to be preparing before a lesson and after a lesson and just doing continual revision. And that is how you'll keep on top of the A levels. Now, yes, it's a lot of work, but remember at GCSE, you were probably doing nine, 10 or 11 GCSEs. At A-level, you're doing three or four. The third thing about the A-level mindset is study periods, not free periods. And you're probably going to hate me for bringing this one up, but it's true and it will really, really help you. So the last tip I'll say, in how are you going to have that time to do the independent learning? Well, you're doing fewer subjects, so that's one way. The second way is most students get between 10 and 15 hours a week 
of study periods. And what I mean by that is when you don't have a lesson scheduled. And sometimes you're then allowed to go home, sometimes you have to then school, different schools, different rules. But the temptation is you're suddenly given all of this freedom and you can chat with your friends, go on your phone, have some food, have a coffee, go to the shops, whatever it is that you're allowed to do. And yes, sometimes you do need to do that for a break so that you can have a rest and for your own mental health. But don't waste all 10 to 15 hours doing that because that will be your biggest regret. Because as you get closer to your exams and you realise you have run out of time, you haven't made revision notes as you've gone through, you didn't bother learning it thoroughly and now you're really struggling. So I strongly recommend that at least three quarters of your study periods are for studying. And that's why I've always phrased it as study period, not a free period. So my fourth thing is take all of your class tests seriously. Now, because of the pandemic, I think a lot of students are doing this now naturally because it's been such a crazy situation where teachers have had to use class assessments um, throughout the two years to pick a grade that students now realise that there are actually potentially really important um, consequences from these tests. So that's one thing. It could be linked to the pandemic or something else that uh, might happen that means you have to have those test results to reflect your grade. But actually more importantly than that is you learn really well from tests. And even if you fail, that is a really important stage in your learning because everyone at some point will either fail or do badly, get something wrong um, in their learning. And that has to happen before you can understand certain concepts and then improve. The last thing I'd like to bring up to do with the A-level mindset is it's really, really important that you are looking after yourself. And by that, I mean both your physical and your mental health. A-levels are really, really demanding. So it will take a physical toll. You'll feel exhausted at times um, and you need to make sure you are giving yourself the food that your brain needs to be able to function, enough water and making sure you are getting enough sleep, which I know many teenagers are guilty of. I was as a teenager, definitely. But if you are not eating the correct foods or enough food, getting enough water, getting enough sleep, you are going to start to feel really, really ill very quickly and you won't be able to focus in lessons. So I know it sounds pretty like mummy-ish me telling you this, make sure you look after yourself by doing all of those things, but it really, really is important. As well as getting enough sleep, which by the way, is meant to be seven hours at least for teenagers, try and get some gentle exercise if you don't already do exercise. This is really, really good for lowering the hormones that can cause stress and anxiety. It's really good for your physical health as well as your mental health. And it's a great break and escape from your studies. To try and make sure that you aren't working too much, if that is something that you know you struggle with, make sure that you actually schedule in breaks. So when you are doing revision, or it might just be every week when you're doing your homework or consolidation, have a time that you know is your dedicated rest time where you won't have to do any work at all. And if you actually put these scheduled times in, then it should mean that you can guilt free, just relax and enjoy yourself and not have that thought in your head of, oh, but I could be doing this. I should be doing this now. If I spend another hour, then I might be able to get this grade. You won't. You need to have a rest. And that is the best way to make sure that you don't burn out before the end of the exams. The last thing linked to this of looking after yourself is make sure you ask for help. So at some point you will face a challenge in your two years, whether that's to do with your course or something else, there will be a time where things might be really difficult. That happens to everyone and it's normal. And what you need to make sure you're doing is not bottling it up and thinking you're the only one and you can deal with it yourself. You will have a tutor in school, you'll have teachers that you can trust. Make sure you go and talk to them or even your friends, your family. Do ask for help if you need it or when you need it. Okay, so the last section is what you can do to improve your study skills to make sure that you don't just survive the GCSE to A-level transition, but you succeed and you really, really thrive and enjoy your A-levels. And firstly is the idea of spaced repetition. Now, what I mean by that is throughout the whole course, you are planning mini intervals of when you're going to revise or consolidate all of the information you've learned. So for biology, your first topic will be cells and biological molecules. And you'll probably have a test 
around October, September. So you need to space out when you are going to repeatedly revise that content before you'll then intensively revise it for a week before the test. And that might just be that every one or two weeks, you're going to add to some keyword flashcards or add to a mind map or convert your notes into a diagram, watch YouTube videos and turn it into notes, whatever it might be. Just make sure you're spacing that out and you're repeatedly going over the content. And that's the best way to improve your long term memory. So when it does then come to the final exams, it's already embedded in your long term memory. That kind of practice strengthens the neural pathways in your brain, which is basically long term memory. So at the very, very least, once a week or once a fortnight, read over your notes just to review that content. Active recall. Now, when you are doing your space repetition and revision, it needs to be in the format of what I call active recall. Now, this means you are doing activities where you have to recall the information in contrast to passive. And what I mean by that is when you're doing passive work, you are just reading the information and you would be recognizing it rather than recalling it. So for example, if you're just reading your notes or the textbook and you're looking through and thinking, oh yeah, I remembered that. Well, you don't actually know if you remembered it because you had it in front of you and you actually recognized it. That's different to remembering. So for active recall, you need to test yourself. So it could be having a list of key words and you have to then remember saying out loud, writing it down, what the definition is. And that way you are actively recalling the facts and testing, did you remember? Now I've got a whole video on the seven best ways based on neuroscience that you can do that, which I'll link at the end of the video and in the description box. Now, one big thing to save you time is, please, please do not rewrite your notes. Do not do them again because they were messy, you need to make them neat, you need to add color, highlighters, all of that, because that is passive work and it's not active recall it takes you hours to do and unfortunately it really doesn't help you much at all in the long run you might there and then feel really satisfied and feel like you understand it a bit better but it does not help your memory so save yourself the time and energy don't do that do something else so that's it that is the summer prep the a-level mindset and the study skills to help you not just cope but to really really succeed with the jump from gcse to a level i'm sure i've missed things because there are so many uh, so if you've got any other top tips then add them in the comments below and if you've got any questions that you think i haven't really addressed or you'd like to know more about also add them in the comments and i will get back to you I hope you found it helpful hearing these top tips from a teacher of 10 plus years. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to keep up to date with all of my latest videos.